Hey, I appreciate all y'all coming on. We got Quest Duaney, we got Lazarus Sims, we got Josh Pace, you know, Syracuse royalty here. So I got, you know, I got my Syracuse gear on. So I'm, yes, I'm excited to have y'all come on. I, I do appreciate it, man. But uh, I wanted to talk about this MJ doc that, that happened last night. Wait, wait, wait. Night. Before you Everybody, start that, can we? Can I just say one thing? I loved watching all of you guys play basketball. You guys are all great. <laughs> I'm a Syracuse alum, and I love the Orange, and I love watching all you guys. Okay, Atan, take over. <laughs> he had to get that out. I had to get you that know, out I, of my I system. But I, I, I love watching those guys lot, play, too. Oh, there was it. a lot from this doc that happened, and it was so much this weird thing that is seeing all the chatter of it now. You know what I mean? And then how it relates, because this is really how – MJ is being introduced to a younger generation. So like my son and them, they don't really know MJ like that. So this is what they're really getting from it. You know, like the first introduction for little bits and pieces. And one of the part, you know, that I thought was interesting was the atomic part, the Pistons, the bad boys part, right? So one of the parts that, that happened, and I, we were talking about it earlier before y'all came on, a lot of the criticism that you see with Isaiah Thomas and the, and the bad boys is how they walked off the, the court after the Bulls beat them, right? But I didn't know that the Celtics did the same thing when the uh, the Pistons beat them. Like, I that was new. Did y'all already know that? Uh, Josh, you tell me. Did you already know that? Or was this new that you saw on the dock as well? Well, I've seen it. I've seen that happen um, a few times back when I watched that uh, rivalry, you know, either watching it on YouTube or watching it through social media in the last few years. And I think um, that's something that just depends on like your, your feelings at the time. Like for some reason, the Celtics, like they were really, they were really, really good. Obviously, they were a dynasty. So when it was time for that moment to be over, they felt like they didn't have to shake their hands. So I had seen that before, and um, that, that's not. I don't think that's uncommon. Like it, it just depends on. Uh, the type of team that you have and the type of people that you're around that's going to determine that situation. Like, I don't think that's uncommon. I do think it's disrespectful, but um, it's definitely not uncommon from from what I've seen and even my experience is playing professional basketball. I mean, Q, have you ever been part of a situation where y'all lost? I mean, because I, I coach the young cats, so I got to be honest. You know, Isaiah Thomas is my man. You know what I mean? Bispins, bad boys, I, I loved all of them. There's no way I would let Malcolm and them not shake the other team's hand if they beat us. I got to be 100% honest. That's just the honest truth. But Q, you know what I mean? Like, what what was your take of it? And, like, you know, would, would you allow a team that you coach right now to do that same thing? Uh, no. No, I, I, I think it's it just it – just, it's wrong. It shows the wrong type of culture for sportsmanship. You know, we all love to compete. And – the best type of competition is usually a tough, a rough one where you almost don't like each other. And and that's more of a genuine competition. And being a, I'm a huge Isaiah fan. He went to Indiana University. I grew up on the footsteps of Indiana University. So he's a legend to all of us. But that never sat well with me how they how they did that. And it's new to me to see that the Celtics did the same thing. Um, I can see those guys genuinely in that generation in the 80s did not really like each other. It was a different level of competition than you're seeing now. Um, it's a little too friendly now, if you ask me. Um, but I, but I, I think it still shows the wrong type of culture that we want to teach kids and we want to do for sports. You want people to compete and compete hard, but you, at the end of the day, it's about saying, you know, mano y mano or woman y mano, you done well. Great job, you know. We'll get you next time, you know. And but, yeah, I didn't agree with that at all. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's interesting. And Z, I want to ask you. Um, I don't know if you're going in and out, but I wanted to ask him as well. Like y'all have been so Z, you you were playing like in the championship game against a loaded Kentucky team. Do you know what I mean? And y'all lost a heartbreaker. So after right. that game, I mean, I know like we lost. I go back to my senior year. We playing against Michigan State. I was mad. Q saw how mad I was. I wanted to punch a hole in the wall. You know what I'm saying? I mean, y'all, I mean, y'all, y'all won. So you have a different experience. But like, sorry, it's like, what was, what would be your reaction? Just give me your interpretation of, you know, just kind of walking off the court because it didn't look good. I got to be honest, Isaiah is my man, but yeah. it didn't look good. I give you my interpretation of watching the film and watching them, and, and I saw it. I was playing during that era. And I didn't like it because, like, 
and you hear the saying of, you know, you win the same way you lost. You you act like you've been there before. And right. to when when Mike and them lost, Mike shook their hand. When you know that's just a salty player that loses and walk off the court because when you win, you want everybody to shake your hand. You want to go see the loser and shake their hand, the best player. You want to go talk with them. But then when you lose, you walk off like that. Yeah, this uh, Van Beer whisper in his ear. It looked like it, but you don't have to go do that. That was just salty basketball. You beat him two years in a row. Y'all shook their hand every year. Y'all, you, you went and sought Michael out to shake his hand because you knew he was the best player in the world to let everybody see that you beat this dude. Now when he overcomes you, you walk off and salty. Like, it, it was just bad for basketball. And I, I would never want none of my kids to do that. Like, I'm a sore loser. Like you said, I lost a championship game. I've never watched that game against Kentucky. I still haven't watched it. My wife watched it and critiqued it. I was like, you should have did this, you should have did that. But I've never watched it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I did, you know, I shook I shook Patino's hand. I shook, you know, me and Tony Delt still talk to this day. Like, I don't like the feeling, but you, it's part of the game. Yeah, no, and I hear you on that. Like, you're like, I'm cool with my team, Cleves, and Lil' Pete, and stuff like that. You know, at that time, I wasn't happy, I'll be honest with you. But, but so, so, all right, so that being said, now let's talk about him not being on the Dream Team. Now, because a lot of times, people point to if he should have been on the Dream Team or not. And I'm looking right. at it, and I got to be honest with you, you know, and this is no slight to nobody else, you know, mm-hmm. on, that was on there. But I don't see how, at that time, at that point, you have Isaiah Thomas not on the dream team, even if y'all are salty, even if there's bad yeah. blood before that. You have the top players. These are the top yeah. players. You know what I mean? Josh, I help me out. What, what, what's your interpretation on that? Well, real quickly, before I, real quickly before I get into that, I want to say, but but in Isaiah's defense, one thing about it, okay, we're speaking about college. So in college, we're taught, we're coached every day that this is how it's done. So obviously, mm-hmm. we're definitely gonna hand, we're definitely gonna handshake and say good game after the game, regardless. That's just our culture. Professional mm-hmm. basketball a little different. Like they don't have that kind of control over the over the players. The players making more money than the coaches, so they don't have that kind of control when it comes mm-hmm. to um, making sure that they shake hands or say good game. Now, they, now when uh when Isaiah, and, I, and I'm not saying like this justifies what he did. But when Isaiah beat the Celtics, I remember watching Larry Bird walk up out of there too without shaking hands. You know what I mean? But uh, right. Uh, to t- to get back into this, Isaiah Thomas. But that's a good point. Know. But wait, wait, wait. But stop yes, right sir. there, Josh, yes, because yes, I don't hear, and this is what I was saying before. I don't hear anybody talk about Larry Bird and them doing that. I don't hear it even Absolutely. brought up. I didn't even know that that happened. So what's the difference? Right. Like, True. You you help me Absolutely. out. Somebody tell me what what is there a difference or I mean because they the whole when when they showed on the dock yesterday. The whole Boston Celtics team got up and walked out. They and the only, way, the only reason why Kevin McHale stopped was because Isaiah Thomas stopped him in his tracks. Absolutely. And then he gave him a pound and he kept going. But Absolutely. the whole yeah, team but it, left. So what's the yeah, difference? Yeah, but if you, if, you, if you notice too, he, he didn't stop Bird. And Bird didn't acknowledge him. They didn't like each other. Either. Like, that was different in that era. Like, they didn't like each other. Like, yeah. Michael didn't yeah. like Detroit. They didn't like each other, so it was different. Even when we lost and we didn't like the team, like, they didn't like each other. It was different from not liking you and I I don't like you. Like, you see that when Mike looked at the video and said, he's still a punk. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, nah, he's still. That was that's deep-rooted. Like, so it wasn't just basketball with them. It seemed like they really didn't like each other. I hear you, but I'm just saying, you, if you're going to criticize, my point is more, if you're going to criticize one, then you need to criticize the other as well. And I don't hear Not the Celtics being criticized at all. If, if one is wrong, the other one got to be wrong. Yeah, it's That's definitely wrong. It's, it's wrong. It's, it ain't it's no wrong. way to swipe. It's wrong it's regardless, wrong. right. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I don't never hear that about Bird ever. I don't ever hear it at all can, whatsoever. Can, can I, I interject? Say. We just have a viewer that wanted to chime in here, and I just want to get the our, our guy here. Trenton writes and says, was the dream team supposed to be the best player or best team? And is that a question that you considered at the time and now? They're supposed to be the best players on the best team. So with that being said, Isaiah should have been on it. He was one of the best players, top 10, not 15, but top 10 players at that time. In 92, they had been, they'd, they'd already won twice. Yeah, they I mean, won, I the, they won both their chances. No, the, the yeah, numbers don't lie. There's no, there's no, right, there's no argument. Don't lie. 
Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. So I mean, if you're so if you're looking at that point, I mean, if you're talking about you know would would MJ and him get along? Would it mess up the chemistry? Would it you know something like that? I don't I don't know. But if we're talking about purely the best players, he should have been on there. And then they say, so who should have gone off of the of the, of the dream team? And this is not a disrespect to anybody, right? Leitner. But at that, well, Leitner was the college player. He wasn't really considered. You know what I mean? Because if that's the case, then Shaq should have been on. Right. Right. That's right. What I mean, though, if you put Leitner on, he shouldn't have been on there if they put in the best players. Shaq should have been on there. So All right. if somebody right. shouldn't have been on there and they doing pros, it should have. Leitner if you're doing pros, then no Leitner. Right. This is a tough debate. This is a tough debate, guys. It's a couple. Debate, it's a couple. It's a. It's a it's a couple people that they could have took off of there. Clyde Drexler, Clyde Drexler, no disrespect to him. He wasn't better than Isaiah Thomas. True. He was nice, though, you know what I mean? No yeah. disrespect to him, but um, absolutely. Go ahead, Q, my bad. But if you're looking at point guards, you're talking about John Stockton. Is right. Isaiah better than John Stockton? You know, and that's yeah. really the debate that I see, you know? Yeah, John yeah. Stockton is a field leader and assist leader, but he got no championships. Isaiah... Yeah, I'm an assist, assist guy, Q. So, yes, yeah, Isaiah is better. <laughs> and he beat he beat be Magic Kobe. and he beat uh, Bird in their prime and he beat Mike. You know, no one else has done that. No one else can sit there and say, I took all these three giants of the game out. If these guys are in the Mount Rushmore, there's not a lot of guys who took them out. And Isaiah is the main guy. He should have been on that team. He got robbed. Um, and it was because of petty personality tricks. It wasn't because of his game. But also the, the Shaq argument and Christian Leitner. Christian Leitner, four Final Fours in college. How many championships? You know, if you're just talking about... Cut it out, buddy, Q. Was he better than Shaq? In college? Yeah, knock it off his team, man. That was the team. No, no, we're talking about college. I should have gotten popcorn for this. (laughs) (laughs) You're telling me that Christian Leitner in college was better than Shaq? No, no. I say that. I say that. I say that. Shaq and Shaquille O'Neal is, is a thousand times better than, than Christian Leitner, and he's got right. the body of work over his career. I'm talking yeah, about his, that point in time. Even that point in time, he was better. His team was better. That's true. That's he true. He had Grant Hill for a couple I'm, years. He had, come on, man. Yeah, that was yeah, a dream. No, I can see we. I can see we talk about any other Olympic. That was a dream team, though, Mike. That's the dream team, Mike. That was. There's only years. one, right? There's that only one dream later. team. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Another yeah. one that I saw that I really, you know, I have my AU team, and I want to show, you know, uh, uh, guys on my team about how they could be utility guys, and everybody doesn't have to be the scorers. Of course, you have a whole lot of other stuff that we was showing with Dennis Rodman, but really, it was like he was so valuable to that team. Like, they wouldn't have been able to make it without him. And they showed his stats. There was Sometimes there was, like, zero points, 19 rebounds. Zero points, like, 18 rebounds. It was, like, amazing. Like, are players thinking along those terms nowadays, or is the Dennis Rodman's, like, a dinosaur now? Because y'all are, y'all are coaching now, and you know what I mean? And I want to know from y'all's standpoint, from what y'all are seeing, do players see the value and being a utility type of player like Dennis Rodman. Zia, I'll start with you. I think they see the value, but they don't see the worth in it, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. Because they understand the Draymond Greens and, the, and they see the different guys in the league that's doing what Dennis Rodman did. But they don't see, but with this era that we're dealing with, they want to hear their name called. Me diving on the floor, me blocking shots, me making a sit and not getting my name called in this era, and these kids want to hear their name called. Because that's what's glorified, you know what I mean. If you take your point, we got two championships on our po- on your podcast right now. And if you watch film of when they ran through that tournament, and all they talked about was Melo and a little bit of Jerry, you didn't see what Quest did lockdown defender. You didn't see what Josh did up there. You didn't see what mm-hmm. he's not on the on the show right now. But Billy Eden, when he came in, the game changed. Right. What restaurant is right. he in? Maybe we can get him on. So, <laughs> so. It's a difference from these kids. It's just the glorified era of me, me, me. Then we and we all four of us played. We just wanted to win. So mm-hmm. I was a six five point guard when they were all small point guards, and I posted up because that was my advantage. Josh handled the rock and did everything. Quest did everything. E, you did more than just block shots and, and rebound, like mm-hmm. because with Bayheim or whoever asked us to go in the game and do, we did it because we were just basketball players. Josh, what you I, think? 
I can definitely speak to this. First and foremost, you you three you you three specifically you three are legends in the game at Syracuse. All three of y'all. Um, but when it comes to myself, the mentality is like I don't even think it's more on the coaching. I think it's more on the personality and the players these days. Because at the end of the day, you got to make a decision. You got to make a de- decision. Um, do you want to do what you got to do to get on the floor and, and do what you got to do to get on the floor and win, but also just to be on the floor and contribute? In my situation, I knew, like, okay, I got all these hoopers here at Syracuse. Even when I stepped on campus, the first time I stepped on campus, I knew I was going to have to make an adjustment. I knew I was going to have to figure it out if I wanted to contribute to the culture, winning, and even leave my stamp on the game and leave my stamp at the school. And um, I just think that takes a lot of hard work and a lot of, a lot of uh, 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 like, letting yourself go and, and maybe not being exactly who you was before you got there. And um, I don't know if, if kids are willing to do that. You know, it takes hard work to take those charges and to get on the floor and to know you ain't going to get these minutes, even though you might be out, out practicing this player. Or the whole even, co- the even when Coach saying, like, you got to figure out a way to get you on the court. I just think, like, it's the mentality, you know, the, in terms of working hard and be able to make that adjustment. Q, you know, like, it was – when you were there, uh, you are part of that championship team, and it was interesting because we had Troy Weaver on, and he talked about it. He talked about you as being the glue that brought everything together and specifically always said, this is what he said, you know, you never get the, got the accolades that you should have gotten because none of that would have worked without you. This is, this is what Troy Weaver said on our show. And he's talking about as far as the leadership, as far as the getting guys up, getting them ready, you know, showing the different things, being able to be the floor leader. You're playing defense. He's like, the 2-3 zone wouldn't have worked without you. You know, I mean, from that yeah. standpoint, but it is a sacrifice because, like Lazar said, the people who get all the all the, all the the praise and stuff like that was McNamara shooting the threes. You know what I mean? Mar- uh, Melo scoring and smiling and stuff like that. That's what gets all the praise. So is that kind of what makes guys kind of shy away from taking on that role? Um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with Josh. It's, it's, a, it's a conscious decision um, that a player at a particular moment in time, uh, it's like an inflection moment where you have to decide, okay, which route am I really going to go? Um, that season was really interesting, and I think we discussed this before. You had guys like Josh Pace and you had Billy Eden. Guys who could start for four years, willing to take roles to come off the bench and be productive. And in my four years there, I never actually saw Beheim reward guys like that. You know, he'd go six deep, sometimes seven. I think our year was the first time he went about nine deep, and guys could get in a groove. Like some games, Josh would get in there, he'd get his 29, 30 minutes, they go to work. Next day, he's getting five or 10 minutes. You know, and guys, at the during the season, we're able to hold on. And Josh was a, a, another personality similar to mine, very measured, never let himself get too high or low. So he was also an important part in terms of keeping the, the team's temperature always mild, you know, never getting too high or low. So he did that, and he, and he was really influential on all the young guys. Everybody looked up to him. You and I did what he did. So it was, it was an interesting team, though, very interesting team, very different from before. But and he's I want to ask you on the team. Lucky lefty. <laughs> Lucky lefty, yeah. But are players today more generalists? Because I hear everyone says they got to have skills. You got to be able to give with the ball. You got to be able to shoot the ball. You got to be able to do all that. Are guys more generalists now and not able to focus on one thing like you know, Dennis Rodman and stuff? Are, like, is that part of the progression of the game? I mean, I think in many ways it is. I mean, for a big man, the way that I played, I'm like a dinosaur. Like, it, yeah. big men don't even play like that no more. Everybody got to shoot threes. Yeah, everybody got to dribble. Everybody wants, and that's how they're coming into it. Yeah, they and it's there. Oh, no, you you going to poke up, you know, shoot jump books and dunk and block shots and rebound? It's like, guys don't, not that I see, even seven-footers. I just saw my man Thon Maker's cousin. He's seven-foot, and he stays on the wing. I don't even want to go inside. You know what I mean? It's just it's a different game. So I want to ask y'all this, time. though. Now, I ain't going to keep up too long, but I want to ask y'all this, because there's one thing that was brought out was MJ, the way that he pushed teammates, right? And I want everybody, everybody here coaching, you know, younger people now. I'm a little bit younger coaching than y'all, but yeah, everybody's coaching. Y'all coaching in college. Um, so with other players, other team, other teammates, right? and how they interact with each other, right? 
do you subscribe to the MJ or the Kobe, like, I'm going to push you to the point of, you know, I don't want to say berate. I don't want to use, I don't know what word to use, but it's a different style. You know what I mean? It's a different level. And the reason why I think that it it is presented in a positive light is because it produced championships. So anything that he did is like, okay, this is what's needed to produce championships, whether it's MJ or Kobe. So Kobe got on players hard. Okay, that's what you got to do to be able to get championships. But what is your take? And I'd be interested to hear your philosophies on your respective team with how you, what players respond to. You know what I mean? And what is the best approach? And I'm sure everybody's different, but that, that's what I'm kind of asking. So, Josh, you, you go first. What's the best approach to really motivating and getting the most out of, out of your players? Well, I think, it, I think it depends on the personalities on your team, and it depends on the type of player that you recruit. Like, spe- specifically, um, in terms of our team, I think uh, with 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 Quef, with Quef Duaney, coach felt he felt like I don't know if, if if it was necessarily true, but he felt like he had to be on Quef's case a little bit more maybe than he needed to be on my case in terms of getting what he needed outside in the, in the whole value of the team. Um, Money Q can handle that. Money Q can handle that. He'll take it. He'll do what he needed to do. I don't know if I can necessarily handle that like Money Q. So I think um, Coach Beham knew, you know, who buttons needs to need to be pushed. And whose buttons couldn't be pushed. And I think when it comes to somebody like Phil Jackson, he knows uh, in terms of the type of players he has on the team, he knows who Jordan is. He knows what Jordan's going to do. You got to have those types of players in that situation that's going to be able to handle that, and, you know, and, uh, and act accordingly and be professional and still produce. And I think when it comes to recruiting, it's kind of similar. Like you have to recruit players and parents that you know that okay, when I have this conversation with them, I'm, I'm letting them know straight up what it's going to be, what they're going to get, when I'm going to, how I'm going to get on to them. But I'm going to make sure they're good and I'm going to take care of them as well. And I think that leads to later on when you do get in these adverse situations, when you're getting on to them, you've already kind of had these conversations with the parents and the kids before they signed that dotted line to let them know, like, I already knew that this is what Coach Joshua was going to bring to the table. So I think um, you definitely got to play, pay close attention and recruit on this level the right way to, do, to uh, be able to coach the way you want to coach. Everybody can't take that coach in the same way, if that makes that sense. Makes sense. No, that makes sense. Coach Z, how, how, how do you approach it, and what is your approach that you kind of adapt? That's that, I'm about where Josh is, and like you said, you, you're talking with three guys, three guys that's pretty on the same spectrum, so you didn't bring a rah-rah guy on your, on your cast today. You brought right. three guys that are pretty much led by leadership. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, we just did what we need to do. We didn't bust. We kind of build our team up. Like, and that mm-hmm. was how I learned how to play the basketball is I'm going to get the best out of my guy by – when he made a mistake, I owned it. If I made a pass and he lost it, I'll say, all right, my bad. I threw it to you the wrong way. I'm going to get it to you the right way, knowing that if I made him feel more confident, he's going to run through a wall for me. Right. You know I mean, I, I carry that even in the pros and, and even when I coach. But to go back to, like, what Josh says, with recruiting these kids, it's, it's a relationship. So as that parent is giving me one of their kids, they got to know, and that conversation goes to, I'm going to treat this kid like I would be treated and I'm going to treat my kid. Meaning I'm not going to ask anything from them from what I wouldn't do myself. So when I go hard at them, they call, oh, oh mom or dad, oh, Z was hard on me. They're going to already know. Well, he told you. Right. He's expecting the best from you. So he's not, it's out of love. And what right. we mean, and you remember all three of us used to talk all the time. Dealing yeah. with Bayon, he breaks you down because, and it's out, of, it's out of love, I think, because he breaks you down because, I, and I dealt with this with, um, <laughs> With um, <laughs> that's what I said. I think, but I dealt with this with uh, with with, with e, e Demendorf when we had Johnny Flynn and we were in pit and he was going through that turmoil with the case. Um, Johnny was going at him in the locker room, tearing him up. I need you. He going at him, calling him soft. And you know, E Demendorf, you say him soft, he jumping at you, he want to fight you. At this right, time in right. pit, they was on him so hard, with, and and he came in the locker room was so shell shocked. Johnny was going at him at halftime where Bayheim had to step in, Johnny, leave him alone. Like, stop going at him, stop cussing him out. And Johnny finally said, Coach, I need it. So I'm cussing him out to see if he's going to react to me and come back to the old E. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he was trying to push his buttons to get that feistiness back where, you know, so like I said, back to Bayheim where he breaks you down where if I go to Georgetown and that crowd is throwing stuff at you and, and yelling about your mom and going this, that's not going to phase you because I already – brought you through that in practice yeah but the thing about it is everybody responds to something differently and you said that as well josh i mean i 
I, I was a little more sensitive. You know, Q saw me there a little bit. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I admit, I was a little more sensitive. But, you know, but Q, right now, you're training your daughters. And I wanted to ask you this now. How do you approach training your daughters? Because, you know, I, I, like, I train my son, Malcolm, and now I'm starting to train my daughters more because now they're, they're in volleyball. But it's totally different with girls than it is with boys. It's just different. The temperament's different. It's, I don't know, it's completely different. So I wanted to ask you that before we let you go. How do you navigate that part? Yeah, it's, it, it is completely different training girls. Um, but my, my leadership style has always been to try to lead by example. You know, don't ask somebody to do something that you're not willing to do. And you're not willing to put that effort out there. And, and that's in, if you're coaching someone, it's in the commitment, it's in the preparation, it's in the understanding and knowing what you're talking about. Because uh, that gives you credibility. Uh, when it came to basketball between the lines, I wanted to be the first one there and the last one to leave and show people that I'm going to leave it all out there. Whether you like me or not, whether you like the way I do it or not, I'm, you're going to say this guy works hard and he deserves it, whatever's going to him, you know? And um, so for the way that my daughters are learning, they're, they're a lot more sensitive than our generation. And being girls, they're even more sensitive. So it's, I find myself teaching a lot more and sometimes making a fool out of myself because I don't know tennis like that. But right. they see that it's out of love and it's, and, and it's about the effort. So what I try to teach them is just, one, work hard. Everything else can be learned. If you have a culture of working hard every day between those lines, you will get better, you will perfect your craft, and, and something positive will happen in the end. I think that's great, you know, and one of the things that I just saw from the MJ doc was just the way that he, when they was talking about, you know, when he was tired of losing to the Pistons and he wanted to get on everybody, and everybody, the way they described it was just like he was just berating everybody. And I, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I would have responded to that, but everybody is completely different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But what works for one person doesn't work for the other. But it's just, I thought that was an interesting dynamic that they, they really showed. You know what I mean? But I, I can talk to y'all forever for this. I, I'm going to let y'all go. But hey, <laughs> thanks for coming on can the I, show, though. And just can, can tell I just, everybody. Tell can everybody I just one, they can one question. Wait, Seth, want to ask you one I got thing. one. I got yeah. one. And it's for Lazar Sims. Oh, 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 we can keep going. No, no, no. no it's for, just for Lazar Sims because I'm class of 96. Now, the All other right. two guys here won the national championship. But I'll, mm -hmm. gonna, I'll just yes, ask sir. this one question. Right now, right? No, no, no. I have one. No, you'll like the question. Trust me. Do you think the 96 team could take the 03 team if it was oh. both at their peaks? Because oh. <laughs> that, 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 That's not even a question. That's just like asking E will his team beat ours. Like, we always want to say yes. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I honestly think we had the best point guard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no, but honestly, but y'all know too, and I will say this: the Kentucky team that y'all lost to really had two teams. Like, yeah, they they had like seven, eight guys that went to the pros. Like, they was like loaded. Yeah. They, 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 they top seven went to the league, and then That's the first crazy. round. So, All yeah. first rounders. Crazy. Yeah, my question. But my I mean, question. Yeah, yeah, my question y'all still, still yeah. almost had them with all of that. Y'all have them. Yeah. So my question, was... my question to you, E, you had a um, I was on Facebook at one time, and you had a teachable moment where you was doing um, you had your kids and you was at a game, and a, and a parent and a fan was heckling you. Uh huh. Do you, you remember that? Con and I, you put it on Facebook where they were going at you, and your your kids was look was kind of watching you and seeing how you was reacting, how you was going <laughs> to react to it. You remember what I'm talking about? Listen, I can tell you so many stories from AAU and coaching and stuff like that, and it's it's interesting because as you, you know, my personality, you say something to me, I'm turning around and say something back to you, but you can't do that while you're a coach in the middle of the game. Nope. So you got to right. start. It's a whole different dynamic. I, we could do a whole show just talking about AAU stuff. <laughs> I should tell y'all some Syracuse stories in this game. <laughs> 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 like I said, I was a little sis. I, told, I said it. I wouldn't be able to handle that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, everybody, everybody, you know, can handle differently and stuff like that. But hey, I got much respect to all of y'all. Y'all all doing great. Y'all all representing Syracuse well all across the country and everything like that. So thanks for coming on. And y'all my brothers. So e, I can, I say, e, can I say something before we get off, E? Go for it. 
Well, first and foremost, let me start with Z. Z, um, bro, you a legend, bro. You a Syracuse legend, obviously. But I, I remember you just worked hooping with us and um, just how you moved around and how you was trying to make us better and even just your conversation and stuff, man. I, I was paying attention to that. So I appreciate you. I ain't never got a chance to thank you for that. Great um, teacher. Just, 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 just for you being around us, man, I remember the whole time I was there, you was talking to me and helping me. And I took that when I was um, when it was my turn to be a junior and senior and, you know, teaching the younger kids that was coming up. And Eton, I don't even know if you remember this, but even when you was in the league, you used to come back and work out in the weight room. And you would let us work out with you and lift weights with you. I remember that, man, and I appreciate you for that, just letting us be around you while you, you know, was going through your process or whatever. And Money Q, you already know, you already know what you've done uh, for, for, for our program and for my time there. I, I had some moments with you to where I broke down and you brought me back up and let me know that don't let nobody see you like this. Just the way you used to move, me and Hakeem was paying attention, bro. So when it was our time, oh, we man. did the same yeah. thing. So y'all legends, man. They they always it's like a, to give me a lot it's of props. It's a brotherhood, they always, man. They always like to give me a lot of props, but you th you three are legends. You know what I mean? So I want to make sure y'all know that coming from me. So yeah, but they don't they don't give you guys the props that they should. Cause I go back to the dome and that mural up up top of that dome, you two should be on it. No question. I Appreciate it. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. And it, it's part of a tradition. So I always talk about how Roosevelt Bowie talked to me my freshman year when I was ready to knock yeah. Bayhan's block off. <laughs> to be honest with you. He's talking to me, man, and it was just it's just ash down. You know, Otis Hill, the way he would talk to me all the time, Jay with the wall, Johnny Dunn. It's part of a tradition. That's just that's just how it works. Yeah. But hey, but like yeah. I said. I appreciate y'all. Love all y'all, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, I love you the same way, bro. But it's like you say, he, we got to take care of each other because it's not about him. It's about us. Once we <laughs> sign that line and we come on campus that first day, we all we all did it. Josh, you did it too when you left. You came back and showed love because you had to teach them that it's not just about him. It's about us going through the process. Absolutely. What's up? That's, yeah, what's up. Yeah. That's, what makes, that's what makes Syracuse the brotherhood and that bond is special. You know what I mean? And we all help each other. So that's... That's what it's about. But, hey, but go ahead. Y'all do your thing, and uh, appreciate y'all coming on, too, all right? Always. Appreciate you. All right. Appreciate you, guys. Yep.